Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Magnus Edholm. And uh, my name is Alistair Orchard. Now, we all know how the internet is revolutionizing the business world. But as we saw in this short video, it's also having a major impact on manufacturing companies. Now, customers like Magnus or I, we can go on the internet and we can tell manufacturers exactly what we want and when. And we do it all the time. We, we do, and if we don't like the answer, we go and find another answer. You know, we can always go back online, we can look for a better price, compare deals. With the internet, there's always an alternative. And this means a loss of business for the least attractive manufacturer. Right. And let me talk a bit about challenges, how, what we are looking at at the moment. Take the car industry as it behaved some good 15 years ago. On an average, it took uh, car companies eight years to develop a new vehicle. And it was kept in production all the way up to 11 years. This is not thinkable today. Today it looks a whole lot different. We're talking about a development time for about three years. And a car is kept on an average six years in production and at the most in eight years. But it's not only the automotive market, right? This is definitely not only automotive. It's across all industry segments. If we take a look at smartphones or consumer goods, if you like, um, the very minute you get your new model, it's more or less yesterday's news. And the hype is all about the next generation of products. So what we're looking at is that shorter innovation cycles, faster, and it's always accelerating. And um, it's all about speed. Yeah, well, it's certainly an exciting time to be a manufacturer. So transformative technologies like, like the cloud, 3D printing, Internet of Things, they're, these are really having a major effect on speed, but right. it's not only about the speed of innovation, it's also about its ability to disrupt. And manufacturing companies must respond. First, by reducing their time to market. So yes, getting faster. But then they also have to work on their flexibility. They have to become massively more agile. And finally, they need to do more with less. Less energy, less resources, less government protection. So we believe that initiatives like Industry 4.0, these are really key. They're a, they're a paradigm shift in the right direction. They, they leverage technology right. to allow us to meet these challenges, but also open up whole new markets and whole new business models for manufacturers. Okay, so summarize what you're saying, Alistair. The companies of today, the they need to get faster, they need to save money, increase productivity, and of course also keep the product quality on a very high level, or even better, increase the quality of the product. Is it possible? Yeah, well, Magnus, we're really on the brink of an age in which the very nature of innovation itself is dramatically changing. Mm -hmm. So we've always talked about faster, cheaper, better, but this goes beyond that. We've talked about implementing best practices, yeah. but we should really be thinking in terms of next, next practices. And at Siemens, we've really embraced these challenges. We've transformed our factories, like the one in Hamburg, into lean, efficient, uh, fast machines capable of delivering the next generation of product to the market first. At Hamburg, we make about uh, 1,300 products for 60,000 different customers. Mm -hmm. And um, what's amazing is that our manufacturing lead time is just 24 hours. That is very impressive, I must say. Uh, it's awesome, but maybe even better. It doesn't matter if a customer is ordering the one millionth of a classic product line for us or the very first of a new product line. We always deliver with the very, very highest quality. We have a quality rate of 99.99885%. Wow. Wow. Now, quality is important, Magnus. Optimization is important. Uh, oper operational efficiency is important. But none of it's enough. It's not enough because everything can change. Whole markets can disappear with a single innovation. So the real question is, how can manufacturers compete in a world of constant transformation? And really, they have to do it quickly. And at Siemens, we manage this by applying digitalization to our entire innovation process. Digitalizing and integrating every step required to, to ideate, design, manufacture, ship, and support products 
in the supply chain. Right. And digitalization starts in the product design step, or perhaps even a step prior to that, when we are collecting the requirements of the customers, what they want to have. But here at Siemens, we have our NX CAD solution, which is a 3D CAD tool in which we are developing or constructing our product and keep on adding information to this data model, 3D geometry, to an extent that we can carry out tests, we can validate and see how it actually acts for real, although in a virtual environment. So no need to build expensive prototypes or physical mock-ups because we're doing this in a digital world. And also in the following step, the production planning, we're creating a digital twin of the production facility. We're positioning robots. We are checking the ergonomics of the people working in the factory and also material flow. Checking buffer zones, uh, bottlenecks, and even checking how much energy is being consumed when we are um, planning and are going to run the production. And this we do while ever committing real resources. Yeah, well, that's that, that's fantastic, Magnus. But you know, traditionally, even if you do these in a computer or virtual environment, then at some point, when I'm introducing my products into the plant, I'm going to have to send out like armies of engineers to reprogram automation, uh, to make the, the plants compatible with the new products, mm -hmm. but not in the digital enterprise, because we're able to make even these profound engineering changes in the virtual world. We're, we're able to exhaustively test them using virtual commissioning, using 4D simulation. Yeah, and 4D simulation is basically adding an extra dimension to the simulation and planning. When does this particular part need to be mounted? And um, that's what we do. Time, right? Time. It means that our virtual and real worlds are dynamically identical. And at that point, we can push out those engineering changes into manufacturing using the tier portal, confident, that we're not going to disrupt uh, production. This means our engineers are faster, and it means we're able to utilize our capital equipment more effectively. Right, and you know what? This is your favorite slide. This is where you usually say that the rubber hits the road, right? It, the rubber does hit the road. Yeah. Um, it's because in this realization phase that uh, we have the biggest chance of our innovation succeeding or failing. Mm. And it's here where Siemens is uniquely positioned to support our customers and ensure that it does succeed. And we're able to do that because of the way our MES and our in, um, automation portfolios are so seamlessly integrated into our overall digital so, um, innovation process. So digital manufacturing software from Siemens like Simatic IT, Camstar, QSIS, WinCC, the tier portal, these are collaborating together to coordinate and synchronize production, to keep production, quality, sustainability, KPIs at the peak output, and uh, providing the crystal clear visibility and transparency that our operations, uh, plant management, product designers, even procurement teams need in order to continuously improve. And it doesn't stop there, because the benefits of digitalization go way beyond manufacturing. They go out into the supply chain where our smart products that have been made are generating data, usage information, self-diagnostic information, sending it in the case of a smart car to a service center. And this is awesome because it means we no longer have to rely on fixed maintenance uh, um, periods, which are useful, user, uh, usually wasteful. But instead, we can rely on this usage information uh, the patterns uh, that the car is uh, generating in order to optimize maintenance periods. And these can be organized directly between the vehicle and the mechanics themselves. And then the mechanics have access to all of that rich information from the car, the history of the car, and uh, all of the 3D information attached to the digital twin of the vehicle. So they know how the car was supposed to behave, statically and dynamically, and how it actually behaved on the road. Obviously, this does not only apply to the product itself. It's also something that we can use in the manufacturing plants. Basically, having modular automation solutions, collecting data, analyzing data, and giving this information to service and maintenance teams so that they can carry out what-if simulation or what-if scenarios in a digital world in order to optimize the performance of the system in the real world. So as you can see, we're weaving a digital web of knowledge throughout this 
um, innovation process. We're using digitalization not only to become more efficient, Magnus, not only to become faster, but in order to create a platform to launch new innovation. And this doesn't happen overnight. We've spent 15 years developing an integrated software portfolio for digital manufacturing. And we're now in a position to offer it to the market, the first truly holistic automation solution. And we call it the Digital Enterprise Software Suite. It's the Siemens comprehensive answer to Industry 4.0 requirements. I said we were uniquely positioned, and this is because Siemens is the only company capable of pulling together the key domains of product lifecycle management, of manufacturing operations management, including MES, mm -hmm. quality, scheduling, SCADA, and so on, and of course our modular, integrated, secure automation systems with safety integrated into them. That's a fact, Magnus. Yeah. And that's what makes us and puts us in a unique position to help our customers as they begin their journey towards a digital enterprise. Right, right, right. You know, but don't forget the thing that will connect everything together, the Siemens collaboration platform, Team Center. Let me show you what it works. Uh, take Maserati, for example. High quality machine, speed, nice. Not only important when you're driving this beautiful car, it's also very important in the product development of the same. And as you can see here, data is flowing seamlessly from product development to production planning, supplier, service. It's all about collaboration, and Team Center is the collaboration platform. And if you picture this, the future product development is different from the product development today. It's different as an abacus, it's different from a computer. Instead of solving problems in a step-by-step -step kind of way, we're working together, we're collaborating. I, I like to use the word here, simultaneous engineering. And the essence here is data availability. Data that is available 24-7, no matter where on this planet you are or in which setting, be it on the top floor or be it on the shop floor. Data should be there and Team Center is taking care of that since it is coordinating, synchronizing, managing and communicating the right information, the right people just when they need it. So it's the platform for teamwork, if you like. Let me try to explain this in another example, Alistair. This one. Sustainable energy. Whoa, whoa, hold on. You're not seriously going to use a windmill to explain digitalization. I am. Look at the audience. Look how sophisticated and intelligent they are. I know, but this is a PowerPoint animation, Alistair. A real windmill is what, somewhat different. I'll show you. If we take a look at a blade, for example, those things are huge. We're talking about lengths up to 80 meters, 60 to 80 meters, and they need to withstand hail. It's uh, snow, rain, high temperatures, low temperatures, but still at the same time be very slick and designed in a way that they are actually producing as much energy as possible. And also, from a manufacturing point of view, they need to be cost effective. To me, that is quite a challenge, am I right? Okay, I admit it. Okay, and also here, the process is starting with an NX in our digital world, where our construction engineer or the construction engineer is designing this beautiful blade. And the data that he's creating is being stored and managed within Team Center. So when a simulation engineer, for example, he, the, the ones calculating the strength of a blade, they, they get the data from Team Center. So they do the calculations and position their waves and making sure that enough energy can be produced and that the wing is strong enough. Would a change take place in the engineering department where the length would be changing? For example, which would mean that the convex and the concave surfaces would change. This information is immediately communicated to the simulation engineers in that, and they can in their turn take a decision on whether or not further analysis is required. And then, when the construction is checked and validated, then the manufacturing teams take over. And you know what? They can start fairly early because they... They have Team Center? They have Team Center, correct. Because the data from Team Center is flowing seamlessly from the product design area and into the manufacturing area. That's just nice. So, to summarize, Team Center a collaboration platform which is connecting people with the products and the processes and the resources across the entire enterprise. From design to simulation to manufacturing, planning, engineering, execution and services. 
And you know what? It doesn't stop there. Uh, let me take this one. Let me take this one. Okay. So I think I've got the answer. I've got the, the hang of this now. This is where we transition from the virtual world into the real world, right? Right. And because those two match so well, we're confident that we're going to get production right first time. Exactly. So once the blade is produced, it gets shipped. And at this point, even the, the logistics and the material flow is being calculated. And you know what? Right down to the migration patterns of birds and the weather can be taken into account, both at sea or on land. And you know what? Simulation makes sure that this windmill gets built on time. And now we're back with this beautiful PowerPoint animation. I wouldn't be able to do it though, but you all see now we're producing energy, but also data. Data that we can use to optimize the performance and schedule maintenance and service. And anyone here in the audience interested in sustainable energy and how we at Siemens are working with this? After our presentation, I kindly invite you to meet our colleagues some good 85 meters in that direction. Um, before, before you send everyone away, maybe I'd better leave the audience with a couple of final thoughts. All right. So, number one, digitalization is the key to help our customers respond to the disrupt disruptive challenges they're, they're facing. Number two, the Siemens Digital Enterprise Software Suite. This brings digitalization to the entire value chain, engaging users with intelligent models and integrating in production at the lowest cost of ownership. And you know what, Magnus? We've got more than 11 million Team Center licenses deployed around the world. So we've really done our digitalization homework. It doesn't matter if you're making a car or a cell phone or a windmill or a washing machine, an aircraft or a bottle of shampoo. You can start your, to create your digital enterprise today with Team Center and with the digital enterprise software suite. Right, right. And let me add a few more numbers to that, what you just said, Alastair. In uh, India, the partner country of uh, this year's Hanover Fair, we got more than 480,000 installed team center licenses. And in machinery alone, more than 200,000, whereas 100,000 are here in EMEA. And uh, as a final word, I kindly thank you for your attention, and I wish you all a very nice day here in Hanover. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you.